Hey, what's up? So I don't hope you don't mind, but I'm going to talk about palm cooling as I make my breakfast here this morning. Um, I get a lot of similar questions, and I've been doing uh, palm cooling um, pretty much with every workout that I'm doing, and I'm having my clients that I train also do it a lot, and I get a lot of similar questions. So um, like how does it work first, right? So as we exercise um, and work, our body temperature increases and the muscles that are being activated or used the most are going to increase in their temperature as well. So as our muscles increase in temperature, they become less effective at contracting. Okay, so contracting is how our muscles produce force. All right, so as we heat up, basically we start to fatigue, right? So that's one way to think of like our decreased ability to contract is basically another way of saying that our muscles are fatiguing. All right, so not only do our muscles fatigue, but there is a signal sent to our brain uh, to do decrease our motivation to continue training, All right? So that's the other side of fatigue is that mentally we have less and less motivation to continue um, and this mo decreased motivation is triggered by um, increased temperature, okay? So this is, from an evolutionary standpoint, probably a way that prevented us from overheating, um, which protected us from dying, right? So if we overheat, we get heat stroke, heat exhaustion can turn to heat stroke, which can turn to death, uh, we could die. So this is very important for us as we evolve. Um, so, um, now that we are in safer environments and have other ways to um, prevent ourselves from overheating and we understand the science, we can manipulate that system um, and control our body temperature really well through some simple means. So the palms of our hand, the forehead of our head, the soles of our feet, um, all have what's called glabrous skin over them. And glabrous skin is hairless skin, okay? And what's important about these areas is that underneath that hairless skin is a special network of arteries um, and veins called AVAs, okay? So AVAs stands for arterial venous anastomosis. And these special networks are primarily meant for uh, temperature regulation. Um, they do not, um, so you know, usually in most arteries and veins, there's a capillary bed that the blood seeps out into, and that's meant for, you know, like transport of oxygen and taking away um, metabolites from exercise. So um, it's like an exchange system for um, oxygen and other, other uh, molecules, okay? But in ABAs, that is not the case, okay? This is a direct connection of artery and vein, okay? And this is only meant, really, um, primarily meant for temperature regulation. And all mammals have this, or most mammals, I should say. Uh, so if you think of, like, when your dog gets hot, it's gonna go stick its foot in the puddle. Um, if you get hot at night, you stick your foot out from underneath the blanket to dump heat. Um, or the other way too, if you're cold, you might put your hands on a warm cup of coffee. Um, these are all ways that we use our glabrous skin and the AVAs underneath to control temperature. Now, from back to an exercise standpoint, so as we exercise, our temperature um, increases. Right? Uh, and again, as that temperature increases, as that temperature rises, we have a decreased ability to perform and contract. And we need, and we can help regulate that through our glabrous skin. So palm cooling has been shown in the literature, and a lot of this is done through research by Dr. Heller at Stanford. Um, so palm cooling has been a way to, sh to use these um, networks of arteries and veins called AVAs to help uh, mitigate that rise in temperature and delay fatigue. Right? So if you're doing sets at a certain amount of reps or you're doing sets to failure, you have a certain amount of time between each set. It's been shown that if you use palm pulling during that intermediate time, that you're going to have um, a greater work output over time than if you didn't palm pull. Okay?
So this has been shown um, pretty you know, kind of over and over in the research and um, with my own company and with my own palm pulling device, I've noticed this as well. From a fitness standpoint, palm pulling can be really beneficial. Um, you can just use it during your normal rest breaks between sets um, or between intervals, right? So while you're just simply resting, which you would do normally, you can palm pull, okay? And this has been shown, again, over and over to improve performance by um, inhibiting fatigue and improving or maintaining your motivation to continue to want to train, all right? So it just, just makes sense. It's super easy. I do it with myself. I do it with my clients. Um, instead of just like standing there resting, I'm standing there palm pulling and resting, okay? And I actually like hold my um, device behind my back, which helps me expand my chest and then have a better recovery posture as well. Uh, so it gives you that benefit, okay? Um, and another way you can just use that more practically even is like if you're wearing gloves while you're training and exercising um, or you have a hat covering your forehead um, and you're getting hot and fatigued, well you need to expose that skin, you take your gloves off, you need to get that hat above your forehead uh, so that you can take advantage of these ADAs underneath your collaborative skin, okay? So that's a minimum that you should do and then if possible you should find a device or a surface that can uh, pump. So. Let's talk about that surface and the temperature a little bit. Um, a lot of people want to use um, ice, right? Or something really, really cold, because colder is better, right? Well, no, not so much. This needs to be cool, not cold, okay? So our nervous system will react a certain way to very cold surfaces. So if you grab something that's probably below 45 degrees or so, your body is going to respond as if it is actually cold out and vasoconstrict. Okay, so we need our vessels, those AVAs, to stay open. So if it's too cold, they're going to clamp down, okay, because your body perceives that the um, outside temperature is actually cold and it's going to try to preserve your heat, whereas we're trying to dump heat, right? So the surface can't be too cold, just cool. So uh, we found that between 45 and 60 degrees has been beneficial to us and most of the research will be say between 50 and 60 degrees when we're talking Fahrenheit, okay? So again, that's cool, not cold. So, again, coverings over our glabrous skin can affect the ability um, of our glabrous skin and AVAs underneath to be um, uh, performing well um, and in a way to cool your body. So remove those coverings um, at a bare minimum when you are training or working hard or perceiving fatigue or increased temperature, okay? Um, so this takes us into the next thing is like, you know, if um, you're on a bicycle um, and you're riding really hard, or you're doing something where you're starting to strain because you're fatiguing enough and the, t the tendency is to grasp down even tighter, uh, to squeeze every bit of might out. Well, as you squeeze, like your palms turn white, right? Well, what if it's happening to the blood that's going through the palms? Well, you're, you're pushing it out, right? You're not allowing those vessels to circulate blood. Uh, so by squeezing tight, you're also decreasing the AVA's ability to uh, regulate temperature by circulating blood, okay? So you can't squeeze too tight, okay? And it can't be too cold, or, you're, or you will not be using the system effectively, okay? So those are a couple things to think about. Now, how long is long enough to get a benefit? Um, so in some of my testing, I've seen like 30 seconds um, to still be beneficial, especially if you're training really hard. It's, you know, if you're going to take a 30 second break after a 40 second interval or something, or a one minute interval and a 30 second break, I think you're going to get benefit from that palm cooling. Um, the research, most of the early research is done with three minute work intervals. And it's been shown over and over to be uh, an effective rest period um, and, it, that, and rest period that is enhanced by palm cooling. Um, and then in my own testing, I found that probably like a minute to a minute and a half has been optimal for me, okay, and, and, my, and some of my clients. So when we train really hard um, and we take a minute to a minute and a half rest break uh, with palm cooling versus without, we're seeing like a 30% improvement in performance. Um, which is really significant, okay? So, you know, I guess the big thing here is like human performance does not need to be, or improving human performance or performance enhancement does not need to be dangerous and it does not need to be illegal, okay? 
it is super effective by just using what we have. Glabrous skin, AVAs underneath, exposing it to cool, cool temperatures um, via just taking coverings off or actually placing that skin on, on cool surfaces. So I hope that helps. I'll, I'll talk more about some other ways to use it in future posts.